What if the world's oldest programming language wasn't invented in Silicon Valley, but discovered in ancient India? We're often told that civilization began in Mesopotamia, that logic was born in Athens, that Latin, Greek, and Hebrew are the roots of modern language. But is that the whole story? Because hidden beneath that familiar timeline lies something deeper, a system of thought and sound so refined, so mathematically structured that some believe it holds the key to how we think, speak, and even compute. That system is Sanskrit. Sanskrit is far older than Latin or Greek and far more precise than modern languages like English. Where English allows ambiguity, where meaning can shift based on tone, context, or cultural nuance, Sanskrit eliminates it. Meaning is encoded directly into its structure. The language is modular, algorithmic, and rule-based. Over 2,500 years ago, the ancient linguist Panini systematized Sanskrit into a masterpiece of logic. His work, the Ashtadhyayi, consists of nearly 4,000 grammatical rules, compressed into compact, elegant formulas that read more like computer code than poetry. Modern linguists, including Noam Chomsky, have acknowledged the startling similarity between Panini's linguistic framework and the foundations of universal grammar in contemporary linguistics. But here's where things get even more astonishing. In the 1980s, NASA researcher Rick Briggs was attempting to teach computers how to understand natural human language. What he found surprised him. Most human languages are too imprecise and ambiguous for machines to process effectively, but one ancient language stood apart, Sanskrit. In a now famous NASA paper, Briggs wrote that Sanskrit had already solved many of the problems of linguistic ambiguity thousands of years ago. Its sentence structure was so logically consistent and precise that it could act as a meta-language, a language capable of describing and processing other languages. For artificial intelligence and natural language processing, this is a game-changing insight. And yet, Sanskrit's sophistication goes far beyond grammar or linguistics. Let's rewind further, before Aristotle, before the Latin alphabet, before even written Greek. Sanskrit was already being used to record some of the world's oldest scientific and philosophical ideas. Among these, the Rig Veda stands out as one of the oldest known religious and literary texts in any Indo-European language. While mainstream scholars date the Rig Veda to around 1500 BCE, researchers like Nilesh Oak have used astronomical references within the text to propose much earlier dates, some as far back as 22,000 BCE. Scholars like Subhash Kak, David Frawley, and N.S. Rajaram argue that these ancient hymns contain references to star alignments and seasonal cycles from over 10,000 years ago. While such claims remain controversial, what is not in dispute is the intellectual complexity and poetic precision of the texts themselves, evidence that sophisticated thought was flourishing in India long before it was recognized elsewhere. Sanskrit's brilliance extended into mathematics and early computing logic. In the second century BCE, a scholar named Pingala composed the Chandasastra, a treatise on Sanskrit poetic meter. In this text, Pingala used short and long syllables, known as lagu and guru, and represented them as ones and zeros. In essence, he developed the world's first known binary encoding system. Pingala's work also demonstrated algorithmic thinking, recursion, and even introduced a structure called Meru Prastara, which is structurally identical to what we know today as Pascal's triangle. This triangle forms the foundation of binomial expansions and combinatorics in modern mathematics. While Fibonacci introduced his famous sequence to Europe in the 13th century, Indian mathematicians had already embedded similar principles into their poetic and linguistic traditions centuries earlier. In recent decades, neuroscience has begun to validate what India's ancient spiritual traditions have long claimed, that chanting Sanskrit mantras impacts the human brain in powerful ways. Studies from institutions like McGill University and the University of Trento have shown that prolonged Sanskrit recitation can increase gray matter density in key regions of the brain, enhance memory retention, and activate the parasympathetic nervous system, bringing the body into a calm, relaxed state. A study published in Neuroscience Letters found that Sanskrit chanting improves brain coherence, promoting focused attention and emotional regulation. These are not just anecdotal claims, they are being measured using MRI and EEG technologies, and they show that Sanskrit isn't merely spiritual, it's neurobiological. So let's step back and take it all in. We are looking at a language that functions like code, sounds like poetry, thinks like logic, and heals like medicine. A language that maps sound through binary logic, encodes symmetry in its meter, and sharpens mental clarity when spoken aloud. Sanskrit was not merely a tool for storytelling or prayer, 
It was a multidimensional system for exploring consciousness, astronomy, logic, mathematics, and philosophy. And it was doing all of this long before Latin even existed, centuries before the birth of the scientific method. And yet, most school curriculums around the world barely mention Sanskrit. When they do, it is often dismissed as a dead language. But Sanskrit was never dead. It continues to be spoken and recited today, in temples, in rituals, and in scholarly circles across India and the world. Its oral tradition, especially of the Vedas, has been preserved with remarkable accuracy for thousands of years, often through exact memorization methods passed down generation after generation. Even in the languages we speak today, subtle traces of Sanskrit remain hidden in plain sight. The Sanskrit word Atman, meaning self or soul, echoes in the Greek atmos, meaning breath. Mater becomes mater in Latin, mother. Gyana, or knowledge, resonates with the Greek gnosis. These are not random coincidences. They are linguistic fossils, fingerprints from a much older source. While Sanskrit, Greek, and Latin all belong to the Indo-European language family, only Sanskrit has preserved the original grammatical architecture with such clarity and sophistication Perhaps most intriguing of all is the ancient Vedic idea that the universe itself is made of vibration. The phrase, Nada Brahma, the world is sound, suggests that all of reality arises from primordial resonance. And while this may sound poetic, modern physics is exploring similar ideas through string theory, which proposes that subatomic particles are not particles at all, but vibrating strings of energy. While speculative, the resonance between ancient metaphysics and cutting-edge physics is too profound to ignore. So what is Sanskrit? It is not just a language. It is a logical architecture, a vibrational science, a cognitive technology, and perhaps even a window into how the ancients perceived consciousness itself. Thank you for watching. If you found this journey as fascinating as we did, subscribe to Awakened Epochs for more.